And I don't know, the polls now, a poll just came out where essentially we're even, and I'm... Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Okay, the even quote didn't go in quite like I wanted it to, but we're even, friends, that's right. It is now safe. Take your pants off and go swimming at the beaches of Fukushima. What? Everything is fine. The fish are perfectly fine. I mean, behind me, everybody knows it's so safe. The alien is fishing. The water's... I wish you'd be careful with that. The alien is fishing the waters of Fukushima. Yeah, that's, that's you know what, that's an awful idea. Um... Not safe. How about that? The waters of Fukushima, not safe. Um, now he's probably going to bust out of my chest or something. Friends, all jokes aside, it is serious news time. Or commentary time, I guess. Um, it's the massive Fukushima update. I need you to do two things. I need you to hit subscribe and share. That's, like, life important. And uh, remember, it's listener funded. The correct views at hotmail.com to help me uh, keep doing better shows. Friends, this is gizmodo.com. Fukushima farmers are using soil made from polyester. Um, this is rare good news here on day one. There will be two days. Um, that's right, two days of uh, massive Fukushima updates. This is your first. Um, this is good news in that they're using something other than the we now know incredibly poisoned soil that is um, <coughs> extant over the entire Fukushima area. We know that these products are not safe. That's why I'm wearing my Fukushima shirt. We know that these projects, uh, these areas are not safe. These products are not safe. The fruits and vegetables are. I personally wouldn't even want to own a Japanese car because of the parts that come in from Japan. They have been heavily radiated. And um, they're saying that there's almost no thyroid cancer problems among the more mainstream publication. Meanwhile, the thyroid cancer rates are up like 105% or something. This has been devastating for the people of Japan. It's been devastating for the world due to the jet stream. Well, we get a little bit of good news at least to start us off on our gra rather grim reporting here. <coughs> it's been five years since Japan's Tohoku earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear meltdown at Fukushima. And some consumers are still wary of produce grown in the region. Well, I hope to say that you you should be. I'm going to go to screen share for those of you on low def. You should be afraid. What they say in the fly, be afraid, be very afraid. Yeah, there's a reason. It's been five years uh, now, really. And uh, some farmers aren't growing plants in soil that might be contaminated. They're growing plants in polyester instead. And depending on where the polyester is made from... Um, this is certainly better news. Um, again, you would wonder if there would be some kind of synthetic risk from this, but it can't possibly be worse than the ground of Fukushima. I mean, let's, at least they're trying here, and I, for one, am very happy to see it. Farmers in Kawama, I think it's Kawamata, a town of Fukushima Prefecture that's about 30 miles from the Daiichi plant, are using thin polyester fibers to grow flowers, aiming to quash misconceptions that Fukushima's agriculture is unsafe. That is not a misconception. The agriculture there is very much unsafe. Um, you'd be better off eating nothing in most instances, unless you're starving to death, than eating this food. Um, well, the, I think it's the, it really is the Kinky University. I so want to go to the Kinky University. How many people listening to this show have ever been or want to go to the uh, uh, Kinky University? All right, friends. Yeah, I could be a little silly because I finally have good news here on the Fukushima update, which never happens. So let me be silly for a minute. 
In a trial, farmers successfully grew 20,000 anatherums, which is a vibrant heart-shaped flower, in a greenhouse in Kawa Kawamata, a town that technically still has an evacuation order in place in one area. But swapping ground soil for this fake soil made of polyester fabrics can not only actually grow crops, but it can give worried consumers peace of mind. So that's great news because radiation levels, it goes on, at Fukushima's coast, while still elevated, have dropped significantly since 2001. Well, as you're going to find out here, that's not going to remain the case because, unfortunately, they're going back to burning much of the waste. Now, I've explained this in prior shows as to why this is an absolutely terrible idea. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain it again. Things like uranium and plutonium do not dissipate when they are incinerated. If you have plutonium or strontium in you and you die and they dig you up 200 years from now and burn your body, the radionuclides will be just as poisonous <clears throat> then as now due to what's called the half-life. If you don't know what that is, look it up. It's, it's, uh, it's a way to mathematically figure out how long a certain radionuclide is going to exist. Many of them go to the millions of years. So TEPCO has begun incinerating radioactively contaminated clothing and other waste on the grounds of the Fukushima plant. This is from Manichi.jp. A three-story incineration facility has been built on the north side of the plant grounds. Every day, around 7,000 unfortunate people work at the Fukushima plant, creating a massive amount of waste in the form of used radiation suits, gloves, and boots. So what are they doing? They are incinerating it. That is going to send the entire waste of radioactive nuclides into the air to recontaminate everything all over again. They cannot be burnt. This is a terrible idea. This is going to bring the cancer rates even further up and further contaminate the entire area. Don't believe me? Maybe this will help you. I am a libertarian. Um, Dr. Helen Colicott is a green tree hugger who believes in global warming. I think she is a lunatic for believing in that because it's not happening. However, her and I would shake hands and have coffee by how much we agree with this. That's because science doesn't know a left or right. There is no reliable science that would tell you that this is a good idea. The only kind of studies that you might find are people that are tied into GE or TEPCO or all of this. This is going to create a cancer, health, heart trouble disaster. As of the end of last year, some 70,000 metric tons of this kind of waste is being held in storage containers. TEPCO estimates that by the year 2028, 358,000 tons of such waste will have been produced, but claims it can reduce the volume of waste as to little as 1 50th of its original size by incinerating it. Radioactive materials contained in the smoke from the incinerator will be removed by filters and exhaust pipes. Now, I am, am I the only one who is talking right now that feels that this has to be one of the stupidest ideas that you've ever heard? They can't even filter the tritium out of the water because it is too fine to be eliminated. Tritium it causes cancer like bunnies breed, okay? So, you mean to tell me they're going to filter out even the tritium?
Okay, now, if you show me an air filter that takes out tritium, I'm like dying of allergies up here. You show me an air filter. You show me an air filter that you can get rid of the, the dog hair in this room. Show me an air filter that will take tritium out. Because I don't think that one exists, okay? I really, really do not trust them. They have lied to us all the way through this fiasco. Uh, friends, the show you're listening to is called The Correct Views, and I've got two more stories to get to. I do want to say that this is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. Who are Sticker Junkie? They are the sticker company. You see the stickers behind me here on high def? This one I scuffed up. It's not Sticker Junkie's fault. Um, this came from Sticker Junkie. Amazing stickers. And when you go ahead and order your stickers and have them delivered, when you're going to the checkout, make sure you type in correct views or the correct views. Because if you do, you're going to get a special discount just because you are a listener of this show. Alright guys, Washington Examiner. Dem says Russian subs are dangerously close to the U.S. Now I'm making this a two-day show. Um, regular listeners know by now we cover Fukushima. And then we cover the whole world to see what they've learned. What, what have our leaders, our great, dear, intelligent leaders, what have they learned since Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Chernobyl... Fukushima, different kinds of radio, radioactivity problems. Um, Brazil, where somebody abs accidentally scrapped an x-ray machine and poisoned an entire village. What have we learned? Bomb testing, blowing up islands, raining, it rained fish, for crying out loud, to quote Chris Busby. What have we learned? Have we learned anything? Well, let's see. Russian President Vladimir Putin is deploying nuclear-armed submarines dangerously close to the United States and European allies, a Democrat said following a trip to the Arctic Circle. Now, this is where me and a lot of libertarians who I just uh, probably made happy are now going to be very angry with yours truly. And let me tell you why. Vladimir Putin is not a good guy, okay? He is a New World Order ex-KGB agent. He is vying for Russia to have the best footing in the coming New World War in much the same way that you would expect any leader to do if they are subscribed to the New World Order theory. Um, and again, the New World Order isn't my phrasing. It's the phrasing of many people, um, including President uh, George Bush first. So don't tell me that it's something that I've come up with. But Putin bringing nukes <clears throat> to our front door is no more moral than NATO putting nukes on his border. Both sides are wrong. So please quit telling me how wonderful Vladimir Putin is because it's about to make me puke on camera. You are not a great leader if this is how you handle Cold War situations. How does a great leader handle Cold War situations? If you're Russian, go ahead and look up Gorbachev. If you're American, go ahead and look up Ronald Reagan. Maybe that's the way this gets done. Maybe it's not a good idea to bring nuclear weaponry dangerously close to the United States, and vice versa, I might add. I'm not saying Obama's a great leader. Regular listeners know I think the man's a disaster. No one is suggesting that Putin is contemplating a nuclear launch against a NATO country. Of course, accidents never happen. But it's not clear how tethered to reality Putin is, Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy told reporters on Monday. And it should make us nervous that many of his submarines are starting to get dangerously close to the U.S. and our allies. And I think it should make a difference. I think it should make you nervous because beyond the, and there's already been almost accidental nuclear launches in the past, keep in mind. Not only is that a very real risk, but I would also say that if, let's say, um, well, it's, it's pretty much what ISIS is doing. I'm not going to compare Vladimir Putin to ISIS. That is not fair. I'm not saying that. 
this one element of the conversation I am comparing to Vladimir Putin, to be clear. I am not saying Vladimir Putin is as evil as ISIS. But ISIS is saying that because other countries have done an injustice to the Middle East, they are going to kill innocent people at a rock concert to justify it. Vladimir Putin is saying that because NATO has disrespected the borders of their country, they are going to potentially kill millions of people in a nuclear strike. Innocent people. It is the same sort of twisted evil reality, so please quit telling me that he's this great Christian, okay? He's... He's another madman with his finger on the button. People call Donald Trump insane. At least he wants to get us out of this mess so that there won't be a nuclear war. Murphy made the comments while arguing that the U.S. Navy needs to pursue an aggressive plan to replace aging submarines, which can, be th which can thwart rival countries from gathering intelligence and maintain the security of global shipping lanes. In recent years, Putin's Navy, it says, has pursued a more aggressive strategy than during the Cold War, Murphy said. And he's right. And just because he's a Democrat, I'm not going to condemn the man when he's right. Russian submarines have been pushing out to the very precipice of NATO ally waters, he said. We have seen Russian boats coming closer to the U.S. and to our European partner ports than ever before in immensely provocative ways, in ways that are were rare even during the days of the Cold War. Well, my friend uh, Giselle, who is a raging leftist, will be delighted with me today because I am going to praise this man. Way to go. Um, I don't care if you are a Democrat. You may, I have no idea who this, what this man's beliefs are beyond this, but he has nailed this. Pentagon officials, it says, plan to scale back production of modern attack submarines if the Navy can't get funding to replace Ohio-class ballistic missile submarines. You're going to have to look at this program with a national lens, because if you drop this into the middle of the Navy shipbuilding budget, it will just gut Navy shipbuilding for decades to come. Um, this is from Navy Secretary Ray Mabus. He said it to the House panel last week. So we've got Russia with the most state-of-the-art killing machines in the water, and we're worried about how much it's going to cost. Meanwhile, we're spending billions of dollars for global warming changes, and global warming isn't happening. And friends, that brings us to the dumb D of the day. Keep in mind, I'm going to be on tomorrow. I am mixing the results of the Wisconsin election with day two of your massive Fukushima update. Oh, there it is. You are an idiot. The theme music for the dumb day of the day. of the day, day one out of two here at Fukushima. It's brought to you by Change Transportation, wherever you're going to go. Look up Change Transportation. Tell them you listen to the correct views and watch the discount that you get. Uber, Uber who? Uh, let me ask you a question. Does anybody want to go to Uber after you've ridden Change Transportation? Nope, not a soul. 2016, so far, small earthquakes drive 23% increase in tremors. This is OKCFox.com. Dumb deal of the day goes to all of the nuclear power plant owners and the idiots that invest in it. And you might be one of them if you're in, a, if you're in the wrong mutual fund. You need to get out. How do you get out? Uh, put it into a structural mutual fund, an infrastructure fund, instead of a corporate fund. Otherwise, you're funding this. <clears throat> Oklahoma City. The total number of earthquakes across Oklahoma has increased 23% from this time last year, though most of the quakes are very small according to the USGS data. In other words, they are growing. The, the Earth is giving us a warning that we are going to create a Fukushima here. How can you create a Fukushima here, you might ask. You'll say, Sam, we know that one of the four reactors, at least, was triggered by the earthquake and not the tsunami. 
We know that. We know that as fact. They started to melt down before the tidal wave. So we know an earthquake of nine, um, like Fukushima's quake was. We do know that that, Sam, can trigger a meltdown. But you, Sam, that's what you're asking me right now. You're saying, you say this can be as bad as Fukushima. Well, how? There's no ocean near Oklahoma to cause the tidal wave to melt down the other three reactors. So you, Sam, are lying. No, no, I am not. It has been discovered, and we've covered it with sources in past shows. I just don't remember the source off the top of my head. But if you look up what I'm telling you, it's quite easy to find. Look up dams, nuclear power plants, uh, meltdowns. If the wrong dam is ruptured during an earthquake, then that is going to send a wall of water comparable, at least to a power plant, to a tidal wave. It's like the ant and the elephant. It doesn't need to be as big as the elephant to devastate the ant. Um, this is a huge problem. People are dumb to the end of the day, going through their normal life, without paying any attention to the facts that I'm giving you right now. That's why I want you to hit share. Oklahoma started the year slowly with the total number of quakes, though it now has seen a large jump in the number of quakes registering 1.9 magnitude or smaller year to date. It's a little warning. You know what a 1.9 magnitude earthquake is going to do to a nuclear power plant? Not a damn thing. Uh, not a damn thing. I'm not here to lie to you. We are seeing warnings. They take decades sometimes to shut these all the way down and to get all the threat away from the fault line. Now is the time to start dismantling them prior to a significant earthquake. So far in 2016, the state has seen 142 of the very small quakes. At this time in 2015, the state registered 16. Overall, 2016 has a total of 825 quakes compared to the 2015 671. We're already way ahead and we're only into 4-5 2016 as I do my commentary. 2016 has seen more large damaging types of quakes, including a 5.1 magnitude quake, the state's third largest on record. We're being warned. We are being gracefully warned by those of you who believe in God. For those of you that unfortunately do not, you must at least know how to read warning signs. When an area is growing in quake activity, you have nuclear power plants, you have dams, you, can, you have a pencil and a pen, you can do your own math on this. You don't have to take my advice just because you like my hat or because you hate it. I have listeners ask about the hat. I come home from work after DJing and sometimes my hair is really crappy so I wear a hat. But I love the many reasons that people give for why I wear the hat. It's, it's, I'll do a whole show, and people will talk about the damn hat. In 2016, there have been nine quakes, 4.0 or higher, compared to just four in 2015. It goes on that the Oklahoma Corporation Commission has issued a number of directives covering thousands of square miles to oil and gas producers to pull wells back. Not a word! Not a single word about power plants! Nah. Scientists and seismologists point to the oil and gas activity for a large increase in earthquakes. In other words, uh, fracking done poorly, I mean, Kasich has done okay in our, in our state, but fracking done poorly and in the wrong area is a disaster. We have nuclear power plants running, actively getting millions of dollars in subsidies from the government to run in an earthquake zone. An earthquake zone that is getting worse and worse and worse. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. I'll be on tomorrow. I'll be doing the, uh, the, uh, why can't I talk? Primary update. I've been talking for a half hour, that's why. The primary update. Uh, let everyone know what the results were, and I will give you the rest of your massive Fukushima slash nuclear update, including a rather large segment on the rather disturbing happenings of our genius over there in North Korea. 
Good night, friends. Thank you for listening. Please donate if you can at the correct views at hotmail.com. Good night, friends, and God bless.